Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on Salesforce Bold. So guys, in today's video, we'll be creating a lightning data table with inline editing functionality. And guys, in that inline editing functionality, we'll be having inline editing for picklist values as well. So recently I came across a requirement where the requirement was to have picklist also as an inline editing functionality. And as you are aware, like this is not possible with the normal lightning data table. So I searched for the solution on Google and found a very easy to use example, guys. So it was worth sharing with you. So that's why I'm creating this video, guys. Let's start today's video. I'm Kapil, your host, and you're watching Salesforce Bold. All right, guys, let's start today's video. So uh, first, let me show you the output, like what will be the output of this data table. So guys, this is my data table here. Let me refresh the page and uh, show it to you quickly. So here I'm having accounts in this data table and I'm having account rating field as well just to show you like how we'll be able to edit the picklist values so here using the inline editing you can uh, edit the picklist values as well so let's say for example I'm making all ratings as hot and apart from that of course you may edit the other field add add other fields as well uh, so let's say if I'm editing the phone number okay save this hit save okay you see the fields has been edited let me refresh the page once okay so using this lightning data table you will be able to edit the picklist values as well okay so while i was looking for this solution then i came across this uh, unofficial sf.com blog uh, i'm following this blog uh, from long time and uh, I was aware about the data table component in flow but I was not aware like it supports uh, editing of picklist values now so I give it a try and yep it was working as expected so guys in this video uh, I let you know how you can add this lightning web uh, add this uh, data table in your flow and how you may add that flow uh, in your page okay and so basically we'll be having the data table inside a flow and we'll be displaying that flow on the page instead of the lighting web component instead of the going with the custom way okay so guys uh, to install this uh, component basically uh, I'll, I'll be sharing this url in the description of this video as well okay so if you are using this data table for the first time so before starting this data table there are some other steps as well which needs to be followed okay so guys before install installing this data table you have to install this flow action base pack and flow screen component space pack okay so these are the two additional uh, packs which needs to be installed uh, before this database be before this data table okay so to install this you may just simply click on it and uh, here you will be able to see the link for the production or developer or or for the sandbox also as I'm using my scratch org right now so I'm using this uh, production or developer org installation so you just need to install it like you're installing any other app exchange application and once it is installed guys after that you have to install this flow screen component base pack also so installation steps will be same okay and once you have installed this flow, uh, flow action and screen component base pack as well after that only you will be able to use this data table component okay so after installing these two packages uh, you have to assign some permission sets to your user so for that you just need to go to setup i'm just showing you permission sets here so the step is pretty much same you just have to go to your user and open the user permission set assignment Okay, so uh, once uh, the package is installed, you will be having these two permission sets here in this available permission set. So you, you have to just add it here, enable permission sets. Okay, so the permission sets are uh, USF flow screen component and USF flow screen component custom objects. Okay, so there are two permission sets basically for that. Okay, now let's go back to the component again. 
and uh, after that you may install this data table package after installing those two packages you may install this third one as well as a data table package and here also i'm using the production or developer link as in as i'm using my scratch arc here okay so guys once it is installed and you have assigned the permission sets as well then you'll be able to see that component in a flow so to use that you just need to create a new flow so let me just create a new flow here so you just need to go to setup and search for flows and here i'm creating a new flow right now and of course that is going to be a screen flow because we need to display the data table on screen okay so let's create it okay so here guys we have to add first the get record element so for now i will be creating a flow which will be having list of accounts okay so i have selected get records let's name it account records okay let's select the object as well account i'm not adding any condition here you may change this as per your requirement okay and I need all records okay let's keep uh, okay so now we are having list of records and then you may add the data table component here so if you will click on add element then you have to add a screen first okay now let's add the label and other thing so let's name it uh, flow data table okay now here guys you have to add that uh, data table so if you will search for data table so in custom you will be having this data table here so you just need to simply drag it on your screen let's give it a name okay now there there, there are some configuration which needs to be done before uh, checking out the record or result so first we need to select the object okay we are selecting account here display which record so we'll select account records all right now there are table formatting uh, display table headers let's choose an icon as well maximum number of records so guys uh, uh, i read that article and uh, there was a limitation with this data table like the maximum number of records could be only 1000 otherwise it is going to hit the cpu timeout limit so just for safety reasons i'm just putting the maximum number of records here okay let's show row number as well and let's show uh, record count also in header all right and these are some other properties of table like required single row selection height columns and uh, so for now we are just passing an object like if you are having your data as an uh, apex defined format so you may just pick this and then you have to configure it that way as well okay so the key field will be id and i remember we have to set the columns as well uh, yeah so here you have to set the columns so let's set up the columns you may select the pick uh, where will be a multi select pick list or you may select uh, manually typing option as well so right now i'm selecting this pick option and from here i'm selecting account name and account phone and rating okay so i'm just selecting these three options let's hit on next all right so this is our list and let's make all column editable let's make all column filterable as well so if you need to specify or if you need to uh, keep a column uh, not editable then you may just simply change the settings from here allow edits you may just uncheck it okay let's hit done and it says column wizard has finished please close this window okay we'll close it now and what else is needed here let me just double check the setting one okay let's see the advanced options as well uh, 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 yep uh, it seems good to me all right so let's hit done 
now we'll go to screen flow again and let's change the footer also so we'll do configure footer use a custom label and let's make it save only okay all right so we are having a flow with a data table which is having inline editing functionality okay so let's save it and test it out so let's name it okay let's run it now so you see the data table the data and the inline uh, uh, editing functionality is also there but uh, there's one catch right now this data table does not allow you to edit the records directly i mean you can edit the records in data table but the records will be uh, will stay on the data table itself i mean it is not going to send those records for a dml operation okay so let's say for example i'm just editing this record so let's put five there and this record is not having any rating so i'm just putting uh, warm rating here okay and if i save it and save here as well so you see the record has not been changed i mean in the data table previously you were, you were able to see the changes like this but it is in the data table itself we are not sending records anywhere uh, to process the dml so for that we have to add the update record element as well so we'll add another element here and that will be update records let's name it update data okay and let's check the selection so guys basically what that data table will do it will just return a collection of editable record okay so here while updating the record we may retrieve that collection of editable record and then we will proceed for the dml operation for the update okay so from here we have to select the flow data table and here we are having three options uh, output agitated rows, output selected rows, and output selected rows. I think these are same. Okay, output selected row and output selected rows. Okay, so for now, we'll be having output agitated rows only. Okay, so let's hit it. And I think, yeah, this is the only thing needed here. So here we are having get record, uh, data table flow, then update record. Okay, so there are basically three components in this in this flow so let's save this and give it a try okay let's hit run okay so here are the records now let's try to add a rating here so let's say i'm adding cold save save again you see the rating is updated on the record as well yep so the update record is compulsory to add here otherwise you know it will be your data basically will be in the flow only and guys uh, before using this component before using this flow data table in your org i would suggest you to go through the complete article on the official website of official website of unofficial sf i mean this sounds crazy <laughs> but anyways i mean this is what it is so this is the official website of unofficial sf so you can just go to the official page you know it is it is hard to say official multiple times for a website you know which is start with unofficial so uh, before starting it do check out the complete article uh on this website as well i'll be sharing the link in the description and also i would like to uh show you the limitations of it so i'm just trying to find out like where i saw them uh let me just scroll a little bit so these are the additional optional functionalities so there are some additional options also so you may check that out as well and object support uh i remember i saw limitations somewhere reference data source mm -mm -mm. okay let's go a little bit more down i think i missed it 
while scrolling. Here it is, turbo shooting and restrictions. I think I missed it first time. So as I said, like uh, the data table will only display the first 1000 records in the input collection. A collection passed in with more than 1000 records could cause an apex CB time limit exceed error. And like there are some other limitations also like while filtering rows in data table, any previous selected rows that are not part of the resulting filter rows will be deselected. And uh, there are some other limitations like you cannot uh, you uh, cannot filter a time column the data type if the ta data type is time so you won't be able to filter it and uh, if you're having column which is having date time then uh, it will be filtered based on date date only so there are some limitations so before using this component uh, I would suggest you to go through these limitations as well but overall like it is a very very good component and very easy to use I would say because you know I mean, uh, it took me around 15 to 20 minutes to you know, set, configure this component on my org and use it. Okay. So I would say like if you really need that inline editing with picklist, so this is the best possible solution available right now and the easiest one also. All right. And guys, also I'll be having a blog of it where I'll be explaining the steps and uh, having some screenshots here. So if you find uh, uh, any, you know, any confusion during this video so you may just directly go there and check that out all right so that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you like today's video subscribe to the channel it will be awesome i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching